Well, welcome everyone. We're up to uh, session three, uh, week three of our Lenten meditation and reflection evening. It's Corinne and I again. Uh, we're recording it on a Sunday night um, and then we're uh, hosting uh, on Monday night at the parish. Again, uh, um, with uh, the feedback we've received over the last week, this seems to be a good combination. And um, we thank you for those who have had a chance to have a look at this. I hope it's a, a prayerful um, uh, hour or so you get to spend, it's actually about 40 minutes, <laughs> you get to spend during this, this length and time of, of renewal. Okay. Well, as we said last week, we start with, a, with an opening prayer uh, and then we listen to the Psalms being sung um, and, uh, and then go into the reading of the Gospel quite uh, slowly, meditatively, um, in spiritual direction uh, and some uh, closing, a closing prayer. Um, before we start, just to help us uh, center ourselves and um, we're going to just listen to some quiet music, maybe start getting yourself comfortable and I always find taking two or three nice deep breaths helps uh, uh, bring us in the right frame of mind. So we'll do that now for a minute. Let us pause and call to mind God's presence within and among us, today and always. You who are over us, you who are one of us, you who are, give us a pure heart that we may see you, a humble heart that we may hear you, a heart of love that we may serve you, a heart of faith that we may abide in you. Amen. Amen.
We're now going to read the gospel twice, reading it slowly. I'll read it the first time, then we'll have a moment to pause and reflect. Perhaps we might find a word or a phrase that speaks to us. And then Corinne will read the gospel a second time and we'll do the same thing again. So a reading from the Gospel of Luke. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with that of their sacrifices. At this he said to them, Do you suppose these Galileans who suffered like that were greater sinners than any other Galileans? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen on whom the tower at Siliom fell and killed them, do you suppose that they were more guilty than all the other people living in Jerusalem? They were not. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. He told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, Look here, for three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and finding none. Cut it down. Why should it be taking up the ground? Sir, the man replied, leave it one more year and give me time to dig round it and manure it. It may bear fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We'll just take a minute or so. I'll play a little bit of reflective music. How those words wash over us. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with that of their sacrifices. At this he said to them, Do you suppose these Galileans who suffered like that were greater sinners than any other Galileans? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. All those eighteen on whom the tower at Siloam fell and killed them? Do you suppose that they were more guilty than all the other people living in Jerusalem? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, 
you will all perish as they did. He told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it but found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, Look here. For three years now, I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and finding none. Cut it down. Why should it be taking up the ground? Sir, the man replied, leave it one more year and give me time to dig around it and manure it. It may bear fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Can you just take a minute allowing those words to, to touch us where we're at? And so we bring this time of reflective prayer on the gospel to a close. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Now what we do is we, we try to bring an active mind to, to the gospel. Um, and we listen to... Uh, a reflection by Sister Hilda Scott from the um, Wollongong Diocese uh, at the Abbey of Jamboree. And um, in fact, we're, we're using the material here, Remember. It's a wonderful, wonderful Lenten program today uh, that we're using for the uh, time here. And so we're going to listen to Sister Hilda now. And then after that, we'll um, pose one or two questions that we can take away to reflect on and think about um, before we enter our final prayer. Do these words seem familiar to you? For heaven's sake, leave it alone. Perhaps they were said to you as a child, and the shudder you felt then creeps upon you even now. Perhaps you can remember when you have said these words yourself. Perhaps now you know that some things just need to be given a chance to resolve themselves. Sometimes our problem is that we think we need to determine the outcome. We alone know what is best. Yet things so often work themselves out when we let God sort it. I remember many years ago a little girl, let's call her Michelle, in one of the schools where I was teaching. She would have been about nine years old when something happened that brought her into disgrace. 
I no longer remember what it was, if I even took it on board at the time. The family were very school orientated and were in everything. They were a great family. However, when Michelle missed the mark, all hell broke loose. She was made to apologize to the principal, the teacher, and to the people concerned. She was told she had disgraced the family name. She was punished. It went on and on. I watched her coming into the school playground. Her eyes red raw, her small shoulders drooped, her mother following still with a look of thunder and breathing fire. Everything in me wanted to say, for heaven's sake, leave her alone. Poor Michelle stood more chance of seeing her nine-year-old Bolly without her mother breathing down her neck. At some stage, her parents needed to trust the training they had given her thus far and let her sort the way forward with their guidance, not their fiery insistence. So it is sometimes with things we have done across the years, things that make us cringe even today. We hide them away, out of sight, or perhaps we adjust our behaviour so no one will ever guess what unpalatable and, to us, shameful truths lie in our past. And what would God say about them? He would say exactly what he said about the fig tree. Work on it, do what you can, then leave it alone. And yet, so many of us do not leave it alone. We blame ourselves and others over and over again. With the passage of time, we see more clearly how wrong we were. And God continues to call out, For heaven's sake, leave it alone. Better still, leave it with me, the gardener of your soul. I know what to do with what looks wrong. After you do that, you will see that this awful baggage has been turned into compassion for others, turned into non-judgmentalism of others, into a greater love and trust for the God who cannot bear the sight of your droop shoulders or the sound of your berating inner voice breathing fire upon your hurting heart. You will bear fruit in plenty, all because you went wrong somewhere along the line. And instead of trying to bring about a satisfactory outcome yourself, you let God bring it about in you and others. When you finally meet him, he will surely say, For heaven's sake, I'm so glad you left it alone and left it with me. Well, thank you, Sister Hilda, for those uh, beautiful words that uh, no doubt um, we can all relate to in some shape or form, either as Michelle the child or as parents of Michelle. Um, we're now going to read uh, Psalm 103. A question for us to reflect on. And the question is this. Families are the domestic church, the setting where our faith can be nurtured and built up. They are also a place to carry out acts of love and service. How can we live our lives as a spouse, parent, child or sibling, grandparent, in ways that glorify God and build our families in peace and joy? So I'll read that question, reflection, question one more time. Families are the domestic church, the setting where our faith can be nurtured and built up. They are also a place to carry out acts of love and service. How can we live our lives as a spouse, parent, 
child or sibling or grandparent in ways that glorify God and build our families in peace and joy. And so we just take a couple of minutes to see how we would answer that question. Wait there the second the second question to reflect on we all have memories that make us cringe that we are trying to undo or fix in ourselves mother hilda asks what god would say about that memory how did mother hilda's direction to offer that memory to god and leave it to him speak to you how can this help to bring about healing? Just that one more time. We all have memories that make us cringe, that we are trying to undo or fix in ourselves. Mother Hilda asks what God would say about that memory. How did Mother Hilda's direction to offer that memory to God and leave it to him speak to you? How can this help to bring about healing? And again, we'll play some reflective music and give you some time, give us some time to, to see how would we answer that question.
And then the final question out of Sister Hilda's talk. Um, Mother Hilda shares the image of God as gardener of your soul. What are some of the things that we need God to prune in our lives? What is the water that sustains our faith and life? And so I'll just repeat that again. Mother Hilda shares the image of God as gardener of your soul. What are some of the things that we need God to prune in our lives? What is the water that sustains our faith and life? Then the couple of minutes on that question before we enter our closing prayer. those questions allowed uh, allowed you to go a little bit deeper in into yourself really and uh, maybe open up a thought that uh, wouldn't have come about if you hadn't given yourself this space um, during this Lenten period um, definitely had something to to reflect on around uh, build our families in peace and joy so there's uh, some some stuff to work on there no no doubt and so we finish with that with a closing prayer from saint patrick given we celebrated saint patrick's day last week and so i arise today through the strength of heaven light of the sun splendor of fire speed of lightning swiftness of the wind depth of the sea stability of the earth, firmness of the rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me, God's hosts to save me afar and near, alone or in a multitude. Christ, shield me today against wounding. Christ with me, Christ before me, and Christ behind me. Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ on my right and Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down and Christ when I sit down. 
Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me. Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ in the eye that sees me. And Christ in the ear that hears me. I arise today through the mighty strength of the Lord of creation. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you all for, for joining us and we hope uh, you have a beautiful week ahead. Good night. Good night.